Hey everybody, today I am reviewing for you The Familiar by Lee Bardugo. The Familiar is about Lucia. She's a scullion in the household of a embittered woman named Valentina. One day Valentina notices a miraculous act has occurred and then eventually traces it back to Lucia, who has been trying to keep her powers secret. It sets off a chain of events that pulls Lucia into the religious and political machinations of the Spanish Empire in its golden age. I'm a little mixed on this book. The only other Lee Bardugo book that I've read so far is Ninth House. And I really liked a lot about that book, but it just didn't grab me. This one, I think, actually got me a little more. It, it grabbed me, but then it didn't really know what to do with me. <laughs> and I'll explain. Based on the marketing and the book itself and the blurb, what I was expecting was a historical fantasy. And I love historical fiction. I love historical nonfiction. I like being transported to places, especially if I'm not super familiar with the time period or the place. To me, that's one of the most powerful things a book can do, which is transport you to another place. I felt like this book, while clearly well-researched, didn't really necessarily do that. And I think part of it is because Lucia herself and other characters really feel so modern that it kind of breaks the spell of what a historical fiction can do. So to me, what this book really is, is a romanticy with a historical background subbing in for some sort of fantasy kingdom. And I think that's probably the most fair lens to look at this book through, even though I feel like the book is kind of promising something else with the marketing. At the very beginning, I really, really love this book. I like the setup, I like the time period, I liked Lucia, I was intrigued by Saint Angel, and I wanted to see how it all worked out. I think what sort of disappointed me was in the middle half, it became a little bit of a slog, and I think that's because it tends to fall back on certain fantasy and romance tropes that I'm just not particularly a fan of. I think if you are more into that world or you don't mind those tropes, then you will like this book even more than I did. I actually had a very fun time reading this. I read this over the weekend, mostly in the car while we were driving on a trip, and then I read it late at night in a hotel lobby while my partner was sleeping upstairs. And honestly, for that kind of book, like a book that you're taking with you on vacation and just want something you can pick up, this was a perfect book for that. Even though I think Bardugo's style sort of disrupts the feeling of being transported to this other time and place, I do like it. I really find her writing very readable. And I think she has a way of crafting interesting characters. When Santangal is first introduced and you don't really know who he is, he's just sort of this corpse-like mysterious person, I was so intrigued. And I really liked the parts where we got into his head a little more. The disappointment really for me came from the fact that there isn't enough of a spin put on the tropes here. And the tropes include Lucia herself, who is very homely, of course, very ugly, but she has power. And of course, over the course of the story, she becomes more beautiful in a way. And even Santangel has that sort of same thing. Like, I think it would have been much more interesting if he had just stayed sort of corpse-like and sort of ugly, but Lucia still loved him anyway. I think that would have been more interesting, but what happens to him is he gets more beautiful too, as time goes on. It was a little less interesting of a choice for me. There's also a lot of competitions and trials, which to me just always feels very YA fantasy. And I like that sometimes. I think there's a reason why that is a trope that is so persistent. And I think it's interesting if you put a twist on it. I'm kind of doing something similar to that in my own fantasy novel. There's a competition, but there is a twist in it that you will eventually find out. I kept waiting for that here, and honestly, the only twist I can really think of is a, a spoiler and kind of disappointing, <laughs> to be honest. When you're reading the book, it's kind of like, oh, okay. You know, it just makes that little middle section that felt a little bit like a slog because it had fallen into so many tropes uh, feel kind of pointless. Who the villain kind of ends up being in this book didn't really surprise me. And maybe that's part of why I kind of lost patience with the book in the middle section because I was just waiting for the book to tell me what I already knew. That being said, I feel like the book pretty much does stick the landing. I'm not entirely sure that the sentiment of it is Earned. I think one of the rougher aspects of this book is the romance itself. 
I don't mind romance. I think it can be a lot of fun. I just think in this, it felt a little underbaked, and I actually think it would have been more interesting if they had maintained a sort of mentor, mentee relationship, and maybe there were these feelings, but they never acted on them. Again, I, this is me wishing the book was doing something different, which I think is sort of unfair, but I just know for myself, I think I would have enjoyed it more if they went that route, just because it would have felt a little less familiar.